What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some beginner tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G to help you get more comfortable using it. Now as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to control which apps can send you notifications. Now when you first download an app or when you're first setting up the phone, you're most likely going to get a lot of notifications. And while of course notifications can be useful in some situations, the more apps you have, the more notifications you're going to get. And let's be honest, not every notification is going to be useful. So I'm going to show you how to control which apps can actually send you notifications so that way you'll only get the ones you actually want. So what you're going to do is go to settings. To do this, pull down this shade from the top, so like that. From here, go to this settings icon. Then from here, go to notifications. And then from this menu, go to app notifications. As you can see, this is basically gonna give you a list of all the apps on your phone. So if you wanna turn notifications off for one, simply toggle it off, and then that app is no longer gonna send you notifications. Now, I do wanna point out there are certain ones you can't turn off, and those are not gonna be listed here. But don't worry, you're really rarely gonna get those. It's pretty much just for something like an update, for example, which again, you're really not gonna to get too often. So in general, if you are getting a bunch of different notifications, you can turn off almost all of them from this menu. Now we're going to take a quick look at the sound menu. Now a quick way to get to this is by hitting either volume key, so like this. From here, hit these dots, and this is going to show you several different volumes. This one right here is system sounds, this is notification sounds, this one is the ringtone, and then finally media, so if you're watching a video for example. And also keep in mind by default, whenever you press the volume keys, this is going to automatically control the media volume. But from here, if you hit this icon, this is going to take you to the sound menu. So again, we got the volumes right here. And again, as you can see, by default, the volume keys will control the media volume. Then from here, if we go back, this is going to take us to the main sound menu. So up top, we got three different sound modes. By default, it will be in sound mode. So if you get a text, for example, it will make a sound. And then you can also turn it to vibrate or mute. Now, by default, when you're in sound mode, the phone is not going to vibrate while ringing. But if you turn this on, you can have it do both. Under this, you can change your ringtone. So if we go here, we got the default, as well as several different presets. And you can also add your own by hitting this plus button. Under this, we got notification sound, so pretty much the same thing. Then from here, we can go to system sound. And this is going to allow you to control, first of all, the system volume up top, and several other different system sounds it makes. So by default, keyboard sounds, charging sounds, that kind of stuff is going to be on. And there's also the screen lock sound, so if I go like this. As you can see, it makes a little bit of a noise. But of course, you can turn these on or off if you want. Under system sound, we got volume. So this is where we started. Then from here, you can go to call vibration. So a lot of different options here. And keep in mind, if you want to change the vibration intensity, you can do this with the slider up here. Under this, we got notification vibration. So pretty much the same thing. You can change the intensity and the actual vibration pattern. The next thing I'm going to show you is a quick way you can customize your home screen. This is definitely useful when you're setting up your phone for the first time, and maybe you want to change your wallpaper, widgets, stuff like that. So instead of going to the actual settings menu, all you really have to do is press and hold your finger on a blank spot on the home screen. But make sure it actually is a blank spot if you hit a widget or an app, it's going to go like this, which is not quite what we want. So again, press and hold your finger on a blank spot on the home screen, so like this. And this screen is going to show up. From here, you can change your wallpaper, customize your theme, add and remove widgets, and access some additional home screen settings. Now, this brings me to the next thing I'm going to show you, which is how to hide an app. Now, there are certain apps on this phone that you can't get rid of, like the Galaxy Store, for example. So if you never use these apps, but you still want to get them off your screen, there is a way you can do this. So what you're going to want to do is go back to that same screen we were just on. So again, press and hold your finger on a blank spot, so like this. Then from this screen, go to the settings. From here, go to where it says hide apps. So right here. And as you can see, it's basically gonna show you all the apps on your phone. So I'm gonna hide Galaxy Store. When you're done, hit done. And now if we go back to the home screen, as you can see, the Galaxy Store is now hidden. And if we go to the app drawer by swiping up like this, as you can see, it's not in here either. And then if you ever wanna unhide it, what you're gonna do is go back to that same screen. So again, press and hold. From here, go to settings. From this menu, go to hide apps, so right here. And then as you can see, everything you have hidden is going to be up here at the top. To unhide it, hit the minus, then from here, hit done. And now keep in mind, when you unhide an app, if you had it on the home screen originally, it's not going to go back there. You do have to put it back yourself. But if we go into the app drawer, which again, to get there, swipe up like this, the Galaxy Store is going to be right here. So definitely a nice feature to have. 
The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change your screen lock. Now by default, as you probably saw when you turned on this phone for the first time, the screen lock is going to be a pin. So as you can see, and I personally have the fingerprint scanner too, but we do have some other options. To see these, what you're going to do is go to settings. Then from here, go to security and privacy. So right here. And then from here, there are several different options. If you just want to change the screen lock and you don't want to use the fingerprint scanner or the face unlock, what you can do is go to lock screen. From here, go to screen lock. Enter your current pin, and you're going to have several different options. So again, by default, pin is going to be pretty much the standard. You can also use a password if you want really high security. You can use a pattern if you want something, but maybe not really that high security. And then swipe and none are pretty much nothing. The only real difference is that with swipe, you do have somewhat of a lock screen, whereas with none, if you pretty much tap on the phone screen or hit the power button, you're basically going to go right to your home screen. I personally don't like it at all, but if you really don't want any kind of screen lock, it is always an option. In addition to this, under biometrics, you can turn your fingerprint scanner on or off, and then face unlock. I personally don't have it set up on the phone, but I'm going to show you how you can do it. So if you do want to use the fingerprint scanner or face unlock, what you're going to do is go back. Then from the main security menu, go to fingerprints, enter your current pin, and as you can see here, you can add and remove whatever fingerprints you want. In addition to this, to use face unlock, go back one more time. Once again, from the main security menu, go down to biometrics. So right here. And as you can see, face recognition is right here. Enter your current pin one more time. And then from here, follow the on-screen instructions. And that's pretty much it. And again, remember, once you do have your fingerprints and your face registered, to turn face unlock or the fingerprint scanner on or off, you can go back to that lock screen menu. And the options are right here. Now we're going to take a look at the system navigation. Now as you can see down here, by default, the navigation bar is basically going to have the standard three buttons. Most Android phones even nowadays still have it, but we do have a few other options. So what you're going to do is go to settings. Then from here, go to display. And then from here, go to where it says navigation bar. So right here. And as you can see again, by default, it will be on button navigation. You can also switch the buttons around. So by default, recent apps is on the left and the back button is on the right. But if we go like this, now the back button is on the left and recent apps is on the right. And then we can also use what's called gesture navigation. So if we go here, instead of buttons at the bottom, now the navigation bar is just one line. So it makes things look a little bit more minimalistic. Now, in case you've never used this before, let me show you how it works. So with gesture navigation, to go home, swipe up like this. To go to your recent apps, swipe partially up. And then finally, to go back, swipe from the side. So definitely real simple once you use it a couple times. But then from here, if you go to more options, you can customize it even more. So you can change the sensitivity, swipe to open assistant. So by default, when you're on gesture navigation, if you swipe from the bottom corner, it's going to open the assistant. So pretty cool. And then finally, you can use what's called swipe to bottom. Now, I'm going to be honest, I'm really not a big fan, but if you do this, it's basically like a hybrid between gesture navigation and button navigation. So if you swipe up from the left, it's going to basically be like your recent apps. The middle is basically like a home screen. And then as you can probably guess, the right is basically like a back button. But in general, at the end of the day, it's really up to personal preference. So if you haven't already, I definitely recommend trying out everything to see what you like the best. Now I'm going to show you how to change your screen timeout time. If you're ever in a situation where maybe you're reading and you want to make sure your screen stays on the whole time, this is definitely a nice thing to know about. So to change your general screen timeout time, what you can do is go to settings. Then from here, go to display. And then from here, go to screen timeout. So right here. And as you can see, I currently have it set to 10 minutes. Now I really just do it for these videos. I personally don't recommend having it on super long unless you really need to. But depending on how you're using your phone, you might want to set it a bit shorter or maybe a bit longer. But keep in mind, if your screen timeout time is really long, things can definitely go wrong. I mean, if you forget to lock your phone or maybe you accidentally press your power key and unlock it in your pocket, who knows what could happen. Regardless, if you have a really long screen timeout time, the screen is going to stay on for quite a bit longer and this can drain the battery. But luckily, if you're in a situation where maybe you're reading, watching videos, or something like that, where you really want to make sure the screen stays on. Aside from just changing the screen timeout time, we do have another option. So to get to this, what you're going to do is go back to the main settings menu. So right here, from here, go to advanced features. Then from here, go to motions and gestures. From this menu, where it says keep screen on while viewing, turn this on. And now, 
with this feature on, the phone is basically going to detect your face with the front facing camera. And as long as you're looking at it, the screen is going to stay on. So that way you can have a shorter screen timeout time. But at the same time, if you're actually using your phone for like reading, watching videos, stuff like that, it's still not going to fall asleep. Now, I don't think that nowadays in 2023 phones fall asleep when you're watching videos anyway, but who knows? Regardless, I feel like it's a good idea to have this feature on because that way, no matter what you're doing, you can have some peace of mind knowing your phone's not going to randomly fall asleep. But at the same time, you can have a more reasonable screen timeout time. So that way, if you set your phone down and forget to lock it, it'll lock on its own within a reasonable period of time to keep your phone secure and make sure it doesn't drain battery. Now I'm going to show you how to take a screenshot with the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G. So definitely a real easy feature. All you have to do is press the power key and the volume down key at the same time. And keep in mind, you don't actually have to hold these buttons. Just press them. So like this. This toolbar is going to show up. You can share it, edit it, whatever you want to do. And that's pretty much it. It's going to save right to your photos. So definitely real easy. The next thing I'm going to show you is a feature called adaptive brightness. Now, as the name suggests, this is basically going to automatically adjust the brightness of your display based on your environment. So if you're like outside in the sun, for example, or maybe a really bright room, it's going to brighten things to make it easier to see. But if you're in a darker area where you clearly don't need it as bright, it's going to dim the display and this is going to help save battery and make it easier on your eyes. So what you're going to do is go to settings. Then from here, go to display. And from here, right under brightness, adaptive brightness is right here. Toggle it on, and as you can see, it adjusts right away. And then finally, the last thing I want to go over is dark mode, which as you can see is actually in the same menu. So if we tap on this, as you can see, we are now in dark mode, so pretty simple here. But we also got some additional settings here. So from here, if you go to dark mode settings, turn this on, and now you can have it turn on automatically from sunset to sunrise, which I actually do on my personal phone, or you can set a custom schedule. In addition to this, if you don't really care about scheduling and you just want to turn dark mode on quickly or maybe turn it off, you don't actually even have to go to the settings to do this. All you have to do is swipe down twice from the top. So one, two. This is what I call your quick menu, so it has a bunch of different features here. If you go to the next page, dark mode is right here. So if you tap on this, we are now in dark mode once more. So definitely real convenient here. But this concludes my beginner's guide to the Samsung Galaxy A54 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.